Good morning, everyone. Welcome to BC201 Christian History and Missions. Thank you so much for joining in today's class. And, you know, before we could begin with our session, can I request one of us to please lead us in prayer? Enoch, can you lead us in prayer? Okay, is there anyone else? Mm, yes, Jeffina, please go ahead. Dear yeah, Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the past we are about to have, Jesus. We thank you and we love you so much, Jesus. I praise each and every one of my classmates into your hands. Bless them and be with them, Lord. Lord, as we are learning about all these missions and histories, God, it is so amazing to know that have, people have given their own life for you, Jesus. People have did a lot of things so that we can have this Bible. So we are so thankful to be in this generation, to read your word each and every day. God, help us to have that revival fire within us, Jesus, so that we will go out boldly. And as we learn about these people, as we know about him, it will inspire us to go out and preach you, Jesus. Be with us. Give us that boldness and courage that we need. And fill us with your Holy Spirit more and more each and every day, Jesus. We bless you and we honor you. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Mom, your mic is unmute. Mom, your mic is mute. Thanks, Aradna, for reminding me that my mic was muted. Thank you. I'm just sharing the list with the class. So you all can let me know who's ready with your presentation. So Enoch said that next week, I mean, next class, he would be presenting on Jonathan Edward. So do we have Subhashish ready with George Whitefield? Subhashish, are you ready with your presentation? OK, or anyone from the class. Aradhana, are you ready with your presentation? Yes, ma'am. OK, so can you present it? Uh, Jeffina is present. Jeffina is presenting? OK, OK, no worries. So you can explain. Good. Can you be a little loud, Aradhana? Can you be a little loud or you can keep your mic close to your mouth so that so your voice I, can be heard? Yes, ma'am. So today I will speak upon, uh, about Henry Martin. So, uh, in the next, li next slide. So, Henry Martin was a Anglican priest and missionary to the people of India and Pashi, born in Truto Cornwall, he was educated at Truno Grammar School and St. James College. Abu Bakr, you are trying to present something? Hold on, I'm trying Hello? to share. I don't know how to. I'm trying to share. I don't know how to present the 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 chair. That's that's what I'm trying. Sorry. Yes, yes, David Bright. Now, can we do that after Aradhana? Right now, Aradhana is presenting on Henry Martin. So once she finishes a presentation, maybe we can take second. Yes, you can present after that. Is that okay? 
of that. Okay, thank you so much. Yes. Please go ahead, Aradra. Yes, yes ma'am. Henry Martin was a educator. Henry Martin was an Anglican priest who did missionary service in India and Persia. Henry lost his mother shortly after his birth and was raised by his father, John Martin. His, in his youth, Henry had a fire and fiery and violent wily temper once he was about to almost kill his friend by through throwing the knife in anger however the death of his father completely changed his nature he went to stay St. john's college cambridge and studied mathematics her fellowship with Church of England pastor Charles Simeon helped her grow in her faith in the Lord, fascinated by the testimonies of David Brenner and William Carey. Henry Kiss, scholarly side, side and all ambition and to become an angel of Christian hope in foreign land decided. He joined the East India Company as a priest and in 1806 Icon came to India. He first reached Serampur and then went to Dinapur. He quickly learned Hindi. Urdu learned Bengali and started preaching the gospel in local languages. Fellow missionaries encouraged by him. He made Bible translation his main ministry. The New Testament and Anglican prayer book translated into Urdu so that Muslim of India to preach the gospel properly. He also established schools for children. Later in 1090, Martin Burton Evangelical Epoch among Muslims traveled Travel to Persia, mortal Iran to race. Despite a deteriorating health condition, he translated a New Testament into Persian and Arabic languages. Later in 1802, he, sorry, in 1892, he stayed out on house by hoping to save among the remaining fallen. However, during the, that 1300 mile journey, they weakened and reached the directed location. There was no more power to reach. He started his career at the age of 31 in the middle of that journey. His last breath, Martin was a powerful man. He's a powerful man. Uh, so Henry Martin died on 16, died on 16 August. So Henry Martin lived in India as a missionary for six years. There was no power. No more power to reach his starting 
Okay, okay. Aradhana, thank you so much for sharing on Martin, Henry Martin. It was a good one indeed. Thank you for the presentation as well. Thank you, Jafina, for presenting the presentation. Okay, so we have Abu Bakr present on David Brainard, who was a missionary to North American Indians. So request Abu Bakr to please present your presentation. And go ahead, share your presentation, and you can start. OK, ma. Good morning, ma. Thank you. Good morning. I don't know how to share it. I don't know how to share it on the Google, Google okay. platform. Can you share it on the WhatsApp, and we can have Jeffina share it for all of us? If you can share your presentation on WhatsApp in your group, we'll have Jeffina share it for all of us. Okay, let me let me try and share this before I present it. Sure, sure. Jeffin, are you okay to present it for all of us? Yeah, thanks. Okay, in the meanwhile, class, let's give a Applause to Aradhana who took effort to share the presentation on Henry Martin and Aradhana, you did well. Thank you. Okay, anyone else who's ready? to share, Elisha, Bracy, Lama, or Paul Ivatu, are you ready with your presentation? I'll share it in a WhatsApp now. Sorry, I didn't get that. I've shared the next guys. I've shared my presentation and all that. Okay, okay. So okay. Will... Let me continue. Okay just... okay, just give me a minute. I'll just check. Jeffina, you have received it? Okay, she has received it. She'll present it soon. Okay. Mm. Yes, Thank you, you can start. Okay. I'm coming. I'm coming on. Please, it's network now. Sorry, ma'am. No problem. We can hear you. You can go ahead. Okay, ma. David Graham was born in April 1970, April 22, 1718, in Adam and in Adam, Connecticut, the son of Ezekiah, a Connecticut registrar and Dorothy. He had a nice sibling. So one of them was Dorothy's from a previous marriage. And then he became an orphan at the age of 14 years after his, his, his father was dead. His father died, died in 1927 at the age of 46 years. But five years later, he lost his mother. After his mother died, after his mother died, Then I moved to East Adam, Adam to live with one of his older sisters, or Janusha. 
At the age of 19, she erected the farm near Duan, but returned to East Adam a year later to, be, to prepare to enter Yale University. On 12, 1739, on July 12, 1979, he recorded having an experience of unspeakable glory that prompted him into a happily desire to resort so to let to set him on a throne and to give to seek for the for first kingdom. This has been interpreted now in entering into mission so two months later, he gets admission into Yale and a student. And the second year, he was sick. And through of this sickness, he was sent home. So after two years, he returned to the school. So after that, because of the sickness of the tuberculosis and his vomiting the blood, so though. After two years, he was dismissed from the school because of the because of the criticism in criticizing one of the tutors by saying no more grace than a share to that person. So when I get over this rash in a statement, but we not secure his statement. He has to he ever <coughs> afterward remain sensitive in criticism about criticism and maintain Christian unity. Then I studied with Pastor Jalila Mills to prepare for the ministry. And as soon uh, and he was soon lances to preach. So he went to work among these Indians and Indian at Konamik about half May between halfway between the South Bridge, Massachusetts and the Amban, New York. He didn't learn the Indian language, but had little missionary success, so he moved on. After being ordained by the Presbytery <coughs> of New York, David began a new work among the Dawalese Indians of Pennsylvania. Here, two Brennan saw little success in his ministry, though often despondent because of his uh, ineffective ministry. Loneliness and repeated illness too brought on by the tuberculosis. Brennan determined to live only for God, whatever his outward success. In 1745 to 1746, during this period, David Brennan traveled Maybe during that travel, travel to minister, to minister, sorry, Abu Bakr, you can hear us. You can. Travel yeah, to minister in India and New Jersey. New Jersey, New Jersey and was amazed at the immediate respondent of the India to the Christian message. Over 100 Indians at the time came to him in the region, bringing poor out his heart, poor out his life in ministry to these Indians, writing that he wanted to burn out in one continual plea for God. He helped in secure, he, he secure land for India when there was a threatening and so constructed his church, school, and carpentry, carpenter store, and his family. By the fall of 1746, Benan was increasingly coughing up blood. The famous theologian, Pastor Jonathan Edward brought him to his home in Northampton, where David spent his last month. 
securing its back on on October 9, 1747. Jonathan Edward's daughter, Jerusha, not Nurse Brennan during during his last illness, and a deep love developed between them. Edward's aunt overheard Brennan tell Jerusa, "If I thought I should not see you and be happy with you in another level, I could not be here to part with you. But we shall spend a happy eternity together." Just. Jerusa contacted tuberculosis also and died in a few months after David at the age of uh, 18 years. After David Brenner's death, Jonathan Edward edited and published his diary, described it as an example of devotional life, most worthy of imitation. The diary was so influenced many missionaries in, in future generations, including William Gary, and Erin Martin, we who went to India and Jim Elliot and Twins Century missionary who gave his live ministry to the Alka India. One of the instructive elements of being life was on how much time he spent in prayer, not only by himself but with other Christians. For example, September 10, 1742. In the after in the afternoon he prayed with the he prayed with the with a dear friend privately and had the presence of God with us. So our souls unite together to wish after the blessed in our eternity. And in December 11, 1742, he wrote a blessing, came to Mr. Bellam lodging and spent the evening with him in sweet conversation and prayer. In December 23, 1742, 1742, I wrote to a new heaven and they joined some sweetness in prayer and conversation with some their friends, Christian friends. My mind was so serious and composed. So that is how he enjoyed praying with people and have secret place with to, to save my time. Because I want Javina to move it forward. So, so what we observe in the lives of uh, Brennan, Brennan, David Brennan is Brennan nearly always reports the vibrant times of prayer when praying with friends. Secret prayer is necessary and important, but we should remember that praying out with other in the midst that God often used to minister to our soul in a powerful way. Bernard, Bernard, secret prayer was often more lively and focused after spending time together with friends in prayer. So Bernard went as a missionary, sometimes with a translator, but often with no friend but his horse. He was walking among the tribe with zero Christian. He often struggled with despair and horrible loneliness. I wonder how his ministry or work with Christ may have been different if he had a like-minded co-worker. In application of his life, so we should pray together as a Christian, that is number one. Number two, we if we don't have friends that we will want to pray with, we should seek out additional friends. In, it's not something we do it with accidentally. Number three, we need to ask others to pray for us and we, with us if we want to grow in, Christian, in, in Christ or to be useful in advance of the gospel. Number four, we should pray with missionaries, just for missionaries whenever we, are, we have the opportunity. And lastly, we should probably we should probably never fly solo, as Bernard did the last few years of his life. So that is my presentation.
Thank you. Thank you, Abu Bakr. Thank you so much for sharing in detail on the uh, life of D David Brainard, who was a missionary to the North American Indians. Thank you so much. You did a good job. Um, yeah, class, y'all can go ahead and compliment Abu Bakr, please. You can leave your comments on the chat. Okay. Okay. So. Let's check our list who's in the class for next who can who would like to do your presentation next. I think almost everyone who have logged in have completed. Okay, we have Subhashish here. Subhashish, would you like to present? Would you like to share your presentation on George Whitefield now? Uh -huh. Pastor, last time actually, I think I have presented. Yeah, you did, you did. Thanks. Thanks. Sorry. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, almost everyone have completed. Yeah, we have Prezi and Paul Lever too, but they are not there right now. Okay, um, okay, let's uh, try to share on our learnings from Henry Martin and David Brennard. What was our learning from these two people's life? Class, you all can unmute and share your learning from these two people, Henry Martin and Re David Brennard. Yeah, you can unmute and, sh and share. What was your learn people's life like? Henry Martin and David Brennard. Before we could go to the next session. Okay. So maybe in the next class, we will have Prezi, Paul Iwatu, and Enoch share on the topics or on the person that has been assigned to them. So in the meanwhile, I thought today we can learn about the second great awakening. So the first great awakening is about Jonathan Edwards, which Enoch will cover it in the next class as he is talking about Jonathan Edward. He should also be covering on the first great awakening. So as we have about another 15 to 20 minutes, I thought I will share about the second great awakening, which took place from 1790 to 1840. Um, it was a time of Vanslick revival in the new formed nation of America. So we, we, we see here uh, the British colonies were settled by the individuals and who were looking for a place to worship their Christian religion free from persecution. So we see that the Americans rose as a religion. We, with re related to that, we see that the America rose as a religious nation, as a, observed by Alexis D. Tocqueville and the other leaders who lived there. So part and parcel of these strong beliefs came a free secularism. So with this, the fear of secularism had risen during the entitlement, which resulted in the first great awakening in the period of 1720 to 1745. 
So, well, the idea of social equality that came about with the advent of the new nation trickled down to the religion and the moment to be known as the Second Great Awakening, which began in 1790. So we see that specifically uh, Methodist and the Baptist began an uh, effort to de uh, democratize religion unlike the episcopalian religion so we see that the ministers in these sects were typically uneducated so unlike the calvinists they believed and preached in salvation for all so what was great revival so what was the great revival so at the beginning of the second great awakening we see preachers brought the message to the people with great fanfare and excitement in form of a traveling revival then we see the earliest of the tent revivals which focused on the appalachian frontier but they quickly moved into the area of the original colonies so these revivals were social events where faith was renewed. So we see that the Baptist and the Methodist often work together in these revivals, where both religions believed in free will with personal redemption. So the Baptists were highly decentralized with no hierarchical structure in place. And we also see the preachers lived and worked among the congregations. So what happened? The Methodist, on the other hand, had more of an internal structure in place. They were very organized people. And these other individual preachers like the Methodist or the Bishop Francis Asbury, who lived in this time from 1745 to 1816, and also the backwoods preacher known as Mr. Peter Carr Wright, who also lived uh, uh, among them from 1785 to 1872, who traveled the frontier on a horseback, converting people to the Methodist faith. So they were quite successful. By 1840s, the Methodists were the largest Protestant group in America. We see the revival meetings were not uh, restricted to the frontier or to the white people. So in many areas, particularly um, the South, black people held separate revivals at the same time with the two groups joining together on the last day. So they called it as Black Harry Horsier. The person who headed this was Black Horry Orsio in 1750 to 1906, the first African American Methodist preacher and a fable orator, despite being illiterate, was a crossover success in both black and white revivals. So his effort on those of the ordained ministry, like uh, Richard Allen, who lived during the same time, led to the founding of the African Methodist Church or African Methodist Episcopal Church. It is known as AME, African Methodist Episcopal Church in 1794. So what happened here? We see the revival meetings were not in small affairs, but we see thousands of thousands would camp into a meeting. And many times this small event turned quite chaotic sometimes where they were singing and shouting and the individuals speaking in tongues and uh, dancing on the aisles. So this was the moment that involved the move. Um, yeah. So some of the key points I would like to share about the uh, great, the second great awakening. So some of the key takeaways that we could take from the uh, second great awakening are just give me a minute, please. I, I would like to share these points on a slide so that it would help us. 
Excuse me a minute. Yeah, I got it here. Okay, I'm just sharing the slide with you. Give me a moment, please. For the benefit of everyone online and e-learning, this will help us a lot. Okay. Okay, we are there. Okay, I guess everyone can see. So here are the key takeaways from the Second Great Awakening. The Second Great Awakening took place in the new United States of America between 1790 to 1840. And it pushed the idea of individualism, salvation, and it gave a free will over the predestination. And then thirdly, it greatly increased the number of Christians, both in New England and on the frontier. The fourth point we see is the revivals and the public conversions became social events that continued to this day. And the fifth point we see that here is the African Methodist Church was founded in Philadelphia. And the lastly, we see that the Mormonism was founded and led to the faith settlement in Salt Lake City, Utah. Okay, so when it comes to Mormonism, we know what it is. You will be studying in detail when we study the world religion on uh, world religion and the different cults that are in Christianity. Okay, so with that, we will end this session on the second grade, uh, I mean, on Christian history and missions. Uh, others, if you all have any questions that you would like to share or your learnings, anything on the three people, I mean, on the three events like Henry Martin or David, David Brainerd or the second grade of awakening, you have, is there anything to share? You all can unmute and share. Zeli has asked which page are we in in the notes. Okay, I'll tell you which page we're on 49. Page 49 on our notes. Okay, so next class we have completed page 52. So next class we will be starting page 51 on the 19th century, preparing the way. After the three people presenting their turn, we can start with a new chapter. Okay, if there's anyone would like to share, if not, we can end the session with a word of prayer. Zeli, you would like to end the session with a word of prayer, please? Yes, sure, Pastor. Yes, please. Yes. Father, thank you so much for this wonderful session we had, Lord. Lord, we bless uh, my fellow uh, students who have presented, Lord. Bless them also. And bless Jeff and also continue to use her as a vessel for the glory of yours. And I thank you so much for Madam. Lord, bless her abundantly as he, uh, she continued to teach us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, Lord, as we wind up, Lord, Holy Spirit, continue to guide us, lead us, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for joining in this session, and thank you, each one, for preparing your presentation. Each one of you all have done your best, given your best. So let's give applause to everyone in the class, and we will encourage and wait for the three others to, you know, uh, present the assigned topic for them in the next class. Thank you, guys. These are the graded assessment. You will be graded on your assignment. I will create um, a graded assignment on the Google Classwork where you can upload your presentation and the Word doc. So you will receive your grading based on your work that has been done. Thank you so much. God bless. See you all. And for the e-learning students, your assessment will be uploaded on the e-learning platform, okay, within this month. So you can have your 
uh, I mean, work done on the platform. Okay, it would be different from the online students. Thank you so much. God bless.